Come on, really, Hugo? How many times do we have to watch this bloody movie? Don't be such a rotter, darling. Look, it's the best part. Aren't I absolutely dashing? You know, Hugo, uh, what do you think of my, um, my new objet d'art? How frightfully delightful. What is it? It's kind of like a uh, transportation device. It takes you to a different dimension where the, um, the Cenobites live. I could use a lovely holiday. Have I met these Cenobite chaps? Oh, not yet, but apparently they do share your uh, love of rather eccentric leisure activities. You should try it, I think you'll, um, you'll have fun. Oh, sounds wonderfully terrific. Oh, by the way, I should warn you, it's a sort of purgatory for people that believe uh, Smart watches are better than traditional watches. Oh my! What an absolute duck! What oh? How do you do? I was just with that TGP, and he tricked me with that bizarre little box. Garish little trinket. I sacrificed my mortal self to that box. We belong to it. Oh dear. Sounds awfully claustrophobic. By the way, I heard you fine fellows down here mistakenly believe smart watches are better than real watches. Have such sights to show you. Oh, dear God. You don't mean one of those Apple watches. You can't possibly do hashtag wristwatch check for the gram with one of those dreadful smart watches, Elsport. But that's where you're wrong. Painfully wrong. But what about the lovely timepiece I inherited from my great, 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 great. Great, 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 awfully great, great, great grandfather Herbert Mountbatten. Stunning Jäger Le Couture. It seems that evil does run in the family. How frightfully rude. No wonder you're trapped in this ghastly place. You're not the first to say that. And you won't be the last. Alright, hi guys and welcome once again to the show and I'm joined by none other than the man, the myth, the legend, it is Mark from Long Island Watch. How are you, sir? Ah, uh, same, same as always and good, how are you? I'm, I'm very well, thank you. Very nice. Well, thank you. So, today uh, we are going to do pilot watches, the best from anything under 1500. Anything under 1500, got it, I got it. A nice assortment there. Yeah, and I, you know what? When I was researching this, I was thinking um, there's a lot of similarities between divers and pilot watches. Yes, there are. The, the way they've morphed into almost like dressy, great everyday pieces, mm -hmm. but they both have this tooltastic kind of utilitarian roots. Yeah, DNA. Yeah, or they have to be legible. And yep, easy, yep. Yeah, it's an interesting kind of dynamic. Um, so, wristwatch check, please. Oh, I'm only going to give you one because the other one is one of the watches I'll be doing. So, I'm wearing... Nice. Oh, I'll show you. I'm sorry. Oh. This is my Mako USA 2 in white. Nice. Uh, Orient has since discontinued this one. So, it's kind of... I mean, it's not a Rolex steel model, but it's kind of hot. Um, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people looking for it. So, figure, nice. why not give this one a spin out of the box this time? 
Very nice. And um, is that 14 millimeters? Uh, 41, I want to say. Right. It's a right and around the same case size as the Ray and Mako, although it is slightly, slightly different. Right, 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 right. I, I remember I owned the Mako. Which one was the all black one? Well, there was there was a lot. There was a make there was a Mako one and a Mako two, and then also a Mako USA black. I don't think you had that one. No. Um, and then there was Gen one and Gen two. Gen one had right. the extra pusher for the. De- Did you have an extra button? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, you yeah. had a Gen one Mako array. How about you? Well. Oh, makes sense. Dude, I yeah, had to it do makes it. sense. It makes sense. So everyone knows this is the flighty. And I, I, I wore it deliberately because then I can kind of make extra space in my five. <laughs> oh, I got else. you for some honorable mentions. Yeah, but I have to say this to me, I think is the best pilot watch um, until the Navi timer. Anything, um, yeah, this right. beats anything non-luxury, I think. Just now, purely, purely for the history. I, I get a lot of people asking me, since it's a 21 yeah. millimeter lug, what yeah. size do you know what size elastic that is is that a 20 or a 22 the ndc do um no one does 21 so especially in you know in fabric is it the original ndc is 21 oh is it really okay yeah the, okay. the historically accurate got it they do other sizes now but, right but um it, it it's it's almost as if it was fate it was supposed right. to be that the is yellow, that is weird yeah I know, isn't that crazy? It is, it is. But it squeezes into a 20 or, okay. it, or it kind of... Expands out a bit. Yeah, into the 22. So it's, Got it. It's, um, because there weren't... They originally, they were actually straps on right, the parachute parachutes, yeah. bags. They weren't mm-hmm. designed for watches. And then right. someone in the Marine Nationale had the bright idea, oh, let's, let's make these. a strap. Right. And I just wanted to say, t- just to... Uh, you know, I'm going to shut up about the flighty because I... <laughs> I, I you know, I... <laughs> You'll never shut up about the flight. Come no, on. No, no, that's true. That's true. Uh, but because of its historical significance, you know, Seiko's history with making the first quartz uh, analog uh, chronograph, the IRAF, uh, the, the, the historic uh, connection with the movement, with the IRAF and all this blah, blah, blah. And of course, just the fact that it does everything. Right. That I, that Alarm, I need to watch. chronograph, yeah. yeah. Dual time, all of that. Yeah. That's why it's, yeah. So... This, uh, so there's no order to today's. No. Well, how about a T-shirt check? Oh, because <laughs> I'm okay. I'm intrigued by you. You're yours. intrigued. Yeah, you can go okay, first. Okay, so this this camera will see it. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You get it. Yep. So this is um, the dial from my Benrus, the Vietnam mil okay. spec. Got it. And it's got the Urban Gentry on the back. Oh, oh, that's yours. Yeah, yeah. This oh. is a new one. Look at that. I wasn't even trying to market for you, and I just did. Because <laughs> I have a marathon shirt that kind of looks like that. That's right. Right, 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 right. Oh, okay, yeah, their, cool. their, their one is, I think, a later mil spec specification. Yeah, it's not colored anyway. It doesn't have the yeah, nice this is old the... radium kind of loom to it and stuff. Exactly. So I've called this the mil spec T-shirt that comes in mm. uh, comes in black and white, all sizes included. So... <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> well, there probably is a mil spec for T-shirts, so I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> there, there's, a, there's mil specs for everything. Of course, there is. Yeah, we right. used to when I was in aerospace. I mean, I, I know it's a rated, it's a rated PG show. Is it rated G or is it PG? PG is PG? parental PG? guidance. Yeah, it's okay, so. right? It isn't cartoon. <laughs> we, there's yeah. actually mil specs on condoms. Really? Yeah. It was quite, you know, because we had access to the whole entire IHS database and just sort of randomly looking up things. There's, there's mil specs for orange juice from concentrate, not from concentrate. It's absolutely amazing. What do they specify the uh, let's, has let's to not do? Talk, let's not talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> but water tightness was one of them. I mean, well, well you know. I should hope yeah, so, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, can I do my T-shirt now? <laughs> Ah, oh, welcome to contraceptive <laughs> chat. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so yeah, go on, I am. I now have a T-shirt for my. It's so funny because, but I don't sell these. This is my yeah. Island Watch T-shirt. It's got a whole bunch of stuff on the back. Why don't you should sell those? Nah, right. You know what? I don't want to really get into the whole logistical shirt thing. Like you just said, you know, colors and so I don't. I'd have, I'd stock like 20 different units, 20 different SKUs just for different sizes and colors. And then you'd have yeah. to have a whole bunch of each and stuff. That's just not my thing. I'm into watches. So right. these are for me and my guys. I, I bought right, them right, for right. Cool. Uh, for everybody on the team. Cool. I, I have to say, I really like designing them. 
I have oh. a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun doing it. So. Yeah, it's cool. It's, that would definitely resonate with the watch crowd. Sorry to go back to the condom thing, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but I have to say, is do you think there's anything kind of like an ulterior motive, like a kind of MacGyver no, secondary all, use? No, it's all no, because it's all no, it's all um for procurement. You know, when the government needs to procure stuff for troops or for whatever, right? Um, this is the spec that that goes out to industry to be approved. That's crazy. So Sorry. yeah, you know, obviously, like there's mil specs for watches. There's a few of them. Um, right. There's virtually mil specs for anything. Right. 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 Oh, pilots' uh, watches. How you doing? Yes, pilot. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's take off. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. I'll insert a little. You know. Oh, nice. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so I will start. Um, and promote my own my own thing. So I'm gonna start with the Islander pilots watch. Okay. Um, this, right. Let's this have a look at just this. To come on, I guess I'll show you first. Oh nice. Just a simple A dial. Um, it comes a whole bunch of different colors. I might have sent you a link to a, a different color. Yeah, you sent me the navy the blue, blue one. Right? Yeah, I didn't yeah. have one available, so I took this one. Black dial. Um, oh, and on the back is an etching of the. I think we talked about Grumman recently in another video. Yes, yeah, we uh, did. So an etching of the F-14 Tomcat in swept wing formation. Right. Uh, so, I, you know, when I did, oh, here he goes. <laughs> How many mugs you got this week? <laughs> Just the two. Oh, good. Oh, you like this one? This is my Star Trek one. Oh, nice. From DS9. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, that's okay. When I did pilots, I started in the. I'm going into the 39s um, later this year. I mean, I was in the 42s, so it's 42 millimeter, 12 millimeters thick. Sapphire. So I put a sapphire crystal on it. Um, it beats on an NH35, 36 movement. You know, Seiko's straight. You know, mm. their everyday movement. Screw down crown, 100 meters of water resistance, excellent loom, all that stuff, and wow. it was a hundred. It's 199 bucks. Um, that's crazy so it, i do very well with it and i think because it really it gives the true essence of the pilot's watch and yeah it's i would say priced way under almost anything out there i guess maybe we should have started the discussion with pilot's watches we're talking about i guess people think fliegers right mm. and, and fliegers were originally made by five companies as you know uh lacos lacostova wemp iwc and uh I lange was it was it a lang yeah I yeah I, I always forget one of them and this is the real that this one is the a dial it's kind of when you look at it you just think pilots watch like you said mm. before legibility is paramount I'm um, kind of like a dive watch. Legibility is paramount. Now with this one, legibility is extremely important. Easy to see the time. Uh, mm -hmm. So I make I make them in A dials, B dials, various colors, loom dials, all this other stuff, and I'll be making them in smaller sizes. Uh, sterile as well, like true to true to form. Nice. Yeah, it's the but, only watch I didn't logo. Nice. Uh, yeah. yeah, I like that because it's you know it's faithful to the the, the very first the ones. original. Just dual, well, just like mil specs. The way they were written mm. for watches, you're not supposed to have a brand name on them. Um, nowadays, those things have kind of changed. Yeah, because the Germans did a similar thing. Of they 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 had a specification that they sent to all those five. Yep. Um, companies companies yeah yes really cool i love the the fact that it's 100 meters as well because it makes yeah it... and the screw down crown which is something you don't normally see in pilots watches right, and i've said before right. pilots watches generally don't need to be very water resistant because if they mm -hmm. do then you've got more serious issues than your watch working um mm, yeah <laughs> so uh but you know i know you know today obviously they're everyday watches for most people so people do take them swimming or whatever nice oh that's that's uh, that's really cool that you've done that and i love the little grumman thing the, on yeah the, the little it's, nod on the back yeah because it's long island and that's kind of like it employed most of the island for a number of decades i'm gonna go with zinn uh, as we're talking germans um okay. founded in f relatively late 1961 by helmut zinn who was a former sure. world war ii uh, aircraft pilot in fact i i in learned this recently that he um he got shot down in the soviet union that's how he really? lost the finger yeah i know that yeah crazy he became um i think a test pilot or a or, a, or was it um i would go a flight instructor flight instructor that's it <laughs> okay. yeah a flight instructor oh my god um 
after the war and it, Zinn originally started doing clocks and you know for the cockpits um, dials and all this kind of stuff and then eventually naturally progressed to watches and considering the short time they've been around they've they've really achieved a lot there was um, a German astronaut who wore one in, in space it was the uh, the 140 s issued to the GS uh, G9 Federal Police. It's like a marine unit, it's kind of like Frogman and stuff. It's the 104. Um, oh, I like that one. I owned it twice, uh, the same one when I was kind of new to YouTube. And I love this watch. It, back then it was 1100. The, this Now it's creeping up to 1500. But mm -hmm. it's such a clean design. It, it, I know it's a pilot watch, but for me it feels very kind of Submariner-esque. Okay. Um, it does have the countdown bezel, which is a bit contentious for some people, but you get used to it. That's and, okay. Um, but the premium materials, the quality, the the, the syringe hands. Syringe got, hands, I was just yeah, looking at. You've got a 200 meters water resistance. It's one of those watches that it's got everything and you start thinking, well, I don't really need anything else. Okay. You know, it's kind sure. of kind of dressy with the, with the finishing and... Um, and now they've come out with a whole series. You've got green dials, blue, yeah. sunburst. Um, the last one for this year, the 2021 version, they added the gray dial and it won a, a very prestigious design award. Okay. Um, so it's still going strong. And I think these newer ones are nice because it adds a little bit of a pizzazz. Sometimes you can say that G German watches are a little sterile when it comes to their you know, right, utilitarian. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly what they're for, right? Yeah, but they but you know, display back. They even bothered to decorate the um, the movement, which is it's just su such a such a great all round do it all. Do you have a favorite color? Uh, you know what? I would have to say the black dial with the because you can get numerals as well. Okay. I just like the black dial. There's just something the very first one. I think it's because I have that nostalgia right. to it i dig the white one yeah yeah oh of course you do yeah, yeah of course you do yeah i like it i like it it's, really yeah. nice. it's a good size too the blue is nice too i will admit <laughs> of course yeah 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 it's a great brand great watch um I, you know there's so many zins i could put in but i think this yeah this really punches way above its weight where should we go from here okay so i'm gonna go original and go old school nice so i'm going with the Laco paderborn Model number 861749. So it happens to be like the, of the expensive Lacos, it's the best seller. Um, so it's very true to original. Again, so I'm still, I'm still in Fliegerland. Right. Um, I leave Fliegerland for a couple of my choices. It's very original, uh, sterile dial. Again, uh, nice sapphire crystal. It's 42 millimeter, whereas, you know, the original Fliegers were 55, 55 right? Yeah. You know, to be worn on the outside of a jacket. This is uh, definitely a smaller, you know, mm. reconstruction, if mm. you will. 42 millimeter, 13 millimeters thick. Uh, runs on an Etta 2824. Beautiful blasted case. Real blued hands, mm. not like painted or anything mm. else. Real blued hands. Um, it's got the period correct, all the engravings on the back. Nice. Um, and even on the side of the case, it's engraved with FL28, whatever. Mm. It's, the, it's basically the procurement number. Or, you right. know, it means wristwatch. Uh, 1190 bucks. They do the Paderborn, and the, you know, Laco names all their watches after like cities. There's an A dial, a B dial, then there's 45 millimeter variants, there's 39 millimeter variants in the, you know, this is like Laco divides it into the. The, the, the lower, the less expensive, which has like your Japanese Miyota movements and your Swiss right. version. This is their real That's a good way of Swiss doing it. one. Yeah, it is because the, the less expensive ones are 410 bucks. I mean, still made in Germany with, with the Miyotas. And then you have this, which then they, with the, like I said, they give you a nice don't, like the crystal is beautiful. Uh, it's a slightly different case. The lugs are more refined, beautiful blasted case. Mm. They just do a lot to it mm. to really elevate it. Um, so I always tell people like from like from five or ten feet away the eleven the twelve hundred dollar watch looks like the four hundred dollar watch. You really have to the devil's in the details. You right. really have to bring it up to your face and but just a beautiful watch and considering the price it actually sells rather well. The bluing of the hands, is that on is just on this these higher higher end versions? Uh, yeah, the um the the less expensive ones don't do that. Right, right. I've always liked that. And but the, uh, they used to do it because um thermal bluing it, yeah, uh, it stops it from r rusting compared to. Yeah, it is. If it, when, when they bring it up, when they when they temper the metal and they rearrange it, uh, 
rearrange the molecules and stuff, it makes it a little more corrosion resistant. Right, 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 right. That's it. Yeah, I, I really don't have much to say. I just uh, because I think it's 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 the one of the brands of the big five that originally did it, and and yeah. it's their heritage and um, a great brand. They they have reached out to me, and I'm and I'm uh, I want to do another review of one. Um, They're nice people. I've known them for many. Yeah, I've known them for many years. I've sold them for many years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they're still independent, aren't they? They're still... Uh... When they were one of the original five, it was Lacher, L-A-C-H-E-R, L- Lacher. Mm. And then it was uh, Lacher and Co. And that's where Lacco comes from. The L-A from Lacher right. and the Co from company is Lacco. So, you know, it's not under the same management that it was, you know... Oh, right, of course. Is, is, that 80, is that 80 years ago now? Yeah, 70 or 80 years ago. But uh, I don't think many of these companies are. It's Fortis. Oh, nice. Pilot Classic, small seconds. And it's very unlike their, what they're famous for. Their, you know, this really tough uh, moon, not moon, or oh, oh, yeah. shouldn't say moon, uh, <laughs> Mars going and Mars, the Mars yeah. and um, the official Russian cosmonaut watches they made. The, yeah, the B-42 or whatever. And I'm a huge supporter of, of, of Fortis. I'm a big fan of theirs. Um, and I always say that the same thing that they're the most underrated Swiss watch brand of all time and and they still are uh, they're right. responsible for producing the first automatic uh, watches in 1926 I think with um, British horologist John Harwood they started making space watches and actually incidentally I almost put the space matic which is um, a kind of 60s inspired uh, watch that they made for I think Mercury 7 team it never actually went into space but it was used during testing okay but then you know um, they got into Fliegers in the, I would say, I think late 80s and 90s. And in fact, I have a book here. Um, this I got from the factory when I visited them. And inside they have uh, a whole section on all the... Um, I'll cut in some footage for, so, so uh, the, the audience can see. But if, if you can see that. Yeah, I see it. Wow. Endless squadrons, elite squadrons all over the world. Uh, and so they were doing this before the the 1994 big, you know, their big um, connection with um, the Russian Federal Space Agency. Yeah. Um, this is actually a new watch, but it's it's a it's a kind of I don't want to say it doesn't make sense to say new take because it's a it's a new take on making classical fliegers, but in a in a kind of dressy way, more elegant way. So you got this huge giant numerals you've got a classical kind of small seconds there the big sword hands but it's very right. very thin beautiful polished case i've reviewed this watch and actually i'll leave a link okay. up there there we go yeah there you go um 40 millimeters but 9.7 millimeters thick nice uh thin yeah it's it's <laughs> it's just gorgeous i i love the balance of the placement of the date and it's a very underrated release uh, for them, and yeah. let me just check the price. I, do yeah, I was just going to ask you what's yeah, the price. What's the price? Sapphire, obviously, a ETA. Oh, it's um, just under. It's fourteen hundred currently. Okay. So, so you you got under. Yeah, that. just about. No, it's a good brand. Yeah. I, me, for me, whenever I think Fortis, it's the B forty two. That oh, is yeah, the watch yeah. that I remember. Is there something about the whole, almost like the the presentation? Of, of everything on the dial it just looks so fluid and clean yeah. and you know very zinish or damasco ish or whatever you know just it's there to do one thing and it does it very yeah, well yeah yeah you know yeah abs- yeah dig absolutely it. so i'm actually pulling out the spork ah okay the seiko spork which has been out of production for a number of years um I, you can still find it for under 1500 on, on ebay or whatever but that would be insane because the watch is only like 300 bucks when it came oh out. i have your original listing here and it says it says notify me right out of stock yeah, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> yeah this was i mean this has been out of stock for uh, i don't know a decade right could, could be a decade or whatever. So it was one of the first. Well, I mean, tell by the it's SRP 043. So you tell by the low numbering, it was one of their first SRP models. There weren't many SRPs before mm. this, uh, and you know SRPs actually were just retired now. Pretty much now they're all SRP ABC. All they're up to SRPG now. Anyway, uh, so the Spork, the 44 millimeter, 
called the Spork because it's the marriage of a diver and a pilot's watch. You know, and these are two of the most popular genres of men's watches, mm. divers and pilots. And so diver, because the big chunky diver's case, it's 44 millimeters in diameter, it's 13 millimeters thick. Uh, stainless steel came on the bracelet that you saw there also came on a, a nice black rubber strap mm. But very short-lived short production run. I want to say I Don't think it was around for more than three or four years uh, Has a rare movement in it uh, the 4 r 15 which it was like a 7s 26 mm -hmm. except you use a Spron mainspring right 50 hour power reserve, but no hand winding no hacking uh, right. It's very interesting. Yeah, um, you know, I don't think I've Hardlex seen one. Hardlex Crystal, Luma Bright. Yeah, no, most people haven't. There was a 4R15, which was date only, and I believe there was a 4R16, mm -hmm. which was day and date. Um, but the, that movement never really found itself anywhere. The 4R3536, the they came out shortly thereafter, hand winding and hacking and stuff. But didn't have, don't use the Spron mainspring that this guy does. Anyway, just looks really badass. Yeah, it I does. It, look, I mean, it looks serious, it's got, doesn't it? <laughs> it has a diver's bezel, you know, the Arabics at the 12, 3, 6, and 9. Uh, the date is tucked away beautifully. Yeah. It's done yeah. in a, it's on a black background, so it kind of disappears. If you're not looking for the date, you won't even know it's there. Yeah. Classic Flieger hands. Uh, I don't know. They just... They need to reissue it. They really do. Oh, my God. I, I can't... For the life of me, I can't understand. But it's been a long time. I don't think it's coming back. Maybe it was just popular in the uh, in the underground or on the underground or whatever. Uh, but you know, when I had them, you couldn't keep them in stock. Do you? I'm I'm curious to know how much do you think if you were to sell your the one you had? I could probably. I'm guessing I would get like five or five or six hundred bucks. That's kind of my guess. Right. That's what, what I was the retail I mean, back like in the day. Three and change. I mean, but I see monster, you know, first gen monsters going for seven, eight hundred bucks. Yeah, you know, and I think that's. I saw somebody I selling a, crazy. a Saab zero three three for I think just a, around oh. the grand. Yeah. Hey, you know what? All you gotta do is sell one, and then you've got your thousand bucks. So if you have time on your side as a seller, it doesn't matter, yeah. right? You know, I'm sure there are people. I am not one of them, but I'm sure there are sellers that have. Sarb 17s, 33s, 35s. They're just tucked away in the corner. You got, you know, you're, you're sitting on a couple of dozen and you're just waiting. Yeah. You're waiting till like the Rolex steel crisis hits the Sarbo 33s and all of a sudden Sarbs are a couple thousand bucks. God, I wish I had a pile of Sarbs in <laughs> 33s. Yeah, right? I mean, it was crazy. Well, last I was selling them, they were 500? Yeah. So, yeah some, some crazy number. And they still sold out. Yeah, that really good choice, really cool choice. Thank you. Yeah, and and and, and the case back, if anyone was interested, is is the, is the tsunami. It's a classic dive. Ah, it's right. an iso. It's an iso diver. So it's the classic case back. Mm. Everything. I love the balance and the numerals because it's just like twelve, three, six, nine, boom. It works so well. It's Panerai-ish, if you will. Yeah, it just yeah, works. yeah, yeah. Yeah. It works. Yeah. Mm. They did a wonderful job. Yeah. Very. Yeah. Great choice. And you know this brand very, very well. Marathon Navigator. Nice. I've owned this twice again <laughs> and probably will own it again. Um, it's just a very inexpensive, honest, mil spec, um, true, built to government specifications watch. And it was, I think it was developed in 1985 on request of uh, yes. Kelly. Airbase? Is it Kelly Airbase? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yes, I believe you are correct. It went out to industry to hey, make us a simple, easy to read watch and meeting all these qualifications. So the, uh, Marathon came up with this and, and I really should explain that Marathon, they're Canadian, but they're Swiss made. Uh, yes. And family owned, independent. I think they're in the third generation now. Yeah. Um, before they were the uh, Wine Brothers uh, there were clockmakers. This I'm I'm talking turn of the century, mm. 1904 or something. They were founded, but it's still owned by yeah, them. still the same family, uh, which is quite incredible. Mm -hmm. And I just you've got you've got the bezel there. It rotates it for a second time zone. When I owned this, it didn't. It had a, a mineral crystal, right? Yeah, they've upgraded. And now they have sapphire, and it's it's made out of a composite like plastic 
uh, resin, I think. Is it? Yeah, it yeah? is. We, we, how, about, how, how about a high performance composite? Oh, nice. The engineer is in the house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we, we don't call them plastics, even though it technically is. I remember when, when I reviewed it, people were like, oh, why would, why would you buy a plastic watch like that? Blah, 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 complaining. And why, you know, should be sapphire and blah, blah. Well, the whole point of it was to resist specific pressures and that those materials which the best yeah they were fine yeah. and back then it was all that way anyway rolex was 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 acrylic yeah back then. right 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 <laughs> and also the 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 i was about to say plastic again um Ooh. this material this particular material was very very light so for for yes. you know if you're it is very light. parachuting out of a plane and you have to have you don't want to carry tons of equipment every gram counts you know so real yeah. mil military spec Actually, I actually think I have one within like arm, almost arm shot. Have you? <laughs> yeah, I think it's missing the crystal. You want to yeah, see? Yeah, go on, go on. Wait one second. <laughs> yeah, it's actually it has no crystal on it, so the the dial is the dial is dusty. Oh wow. Um, this is um this is a no date version, which is the same watch, just a uh, the the navigator is I'll 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 school everybody watching since I know it. Yeah, please do. WW194013, that's the one you're talking mm -hmm. about. This is the no date version which is the 001. And now they make them all sterile with US government, without US government. They make them in black, they make them in sage green, mm. they make them in desert tan. They make them in so many different colors. But yeah, super duper light. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It's and when you look at it, you 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 don't think plastic because it doesn't it it, it doesn't look like plastic it's got I mean, a really got, nice kind of grainy finish to it it does it does because it's, it's a high performance yeah. composite and now they have battery hatches i believe too yes yeah yeah so yeah. if then the battery goes you just use a like a nickel yeah i should have said sorry dime. i apologize i didn't say it. it's a swiss uh is it a ronda quartz um you know that I'd have to look up. So, it's your watch, not mine. But I, inf I, I unfortunately know a whole ton about it. <laughs> no, no, that's great. I love it because um, I think I might have to buy it again. I really do. There yeah, I might as well. It's it's only how much are they going for these days? Two, two, two something. something. I also wanted to include this because um, I was watching Netflix and there was a show called The Old Guard, which is just I think came out this year with Sh uh, Sh I can never say a name. Charlize Theron. Ther oh, Char Sh yeah. Oh, let's Theron. call it Theron. How's that? Charlize Theron. Um, there's a character played by an actress called Kiki Lane who plays. Um, she's a. She's a. I think she was a marine. Anyway, I was watching the show. They're in Afghanistan, and they're they're raiding a, a house. Right, that they believe they the the there's terrorists inside. She, she's holding up the, the M16. Lo and behold, Marathon Navigator. I almost, I oh, almost leapt out of my chair. I was like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they are really are issued to not, not only Canadian military, because it's a Canadian company, they're issued to US military and they're issued to Israeli right, military. Right, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, they actually are, Marathon is on the QPL, the Qualified Parts List, or Qualified Supplier List, for all these governments to supply mil spec watches to the troops i thought it was brilliant apparently they they did work with them to because they wanted to it to be as authentic as possible and i was just like a little little marketing there genius throughout history we've protected this world fighting in the shadows but it's nearly impossible to disappear in the world we live in today these are extraordinary individuals. They are extremely resistant to capture. I posted a post on the um, Urban Gentry uh, uh, Instagram. I did a whole. I did screenshots. I'll show. I'll show you first. Oh sure, thank so you. So that's the okay. show. And got it. It's a superhero kind of comic book adaptation, but it's super fun and okay. Yeah, several of the characters wear ma uh, marathon navigators. I was like, yes. Okay. And now I'm going back to conventional Flieger one more time. I apologize. I'm going to one of the original five again. Uh, Stova. Uh, Flieger Bronze Vintage 36. I wanted to throw a bronze nice. in. And at 36 millimeter, I think... Uh, you know, I, I, 
I guess I, there's other things I probably sh we should have said in the beginning. You know, we said, okay, so original Fliegers were 55 mm. millimeters. Um, they were hand crankers. And I tried to pick watches that kind of echoed at least one of those elements in, 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 in its specs. So this one for me is that it, it is available with a hand wine nice. movement. Uh, price, it's, eh, you can just squeak right in at around the $1,500 mark that we're looking at. So it's a 36 millimeter by about nine thick. Beautiful, uh, what, CUSN 8 case, oh, a bronze case. It looks so good in bronze, doesn't it? Yeah. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? And the blue, look how blue yeah. those hands are. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. Uh, they do with or without date, with or without logo. You can get it with a hand, with the automatic Etta, or like I said, uh, they do a Solita 215 hand, hand cranker. Old radium loom, a nice see-through case back because they do a great job mm. on the movement and stuff. Um, I just think to me... I mean, the Flieger is supposed to be large. At least this thing's only yeah. 36. You know, it's a full, what, almost 19 millimeters smaller Jesus, than the original yeah. Gangster. Uh, uh, but definitely something that more people can wear. And like like you just hit, man, the bronze, I don't know, something about it. It just works so well. Bronze and blue, yeah. gold and blue always work well together. Works very well with the blue hands. And it's obviously going to get a lot more patina as you wear it. But it, it, yes. it looks more oldie worldy, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it does. It has, definitely has that kind of that vintage flair look, if you will. And like you said, it's only going to get older looking, at, you know, as you develop more of a patina on it, the bronze. It's, it's clever, too, because um, with Fliegers, there's only so much you can do, right? You, but, you but have then, a definition. They, then This is a genius idea. Absolute genius. Yeah. I, I love how they've put the date at the six, and then they actually put the date on number six. So I didn't even notice it at first. Yes. Yeah, well, that's a little, yeah, <laughs> a little, a little, a little, uh, that's a little under the radar advertising there. Very slick. That's got a date. Yeah, it's very nice. And they did, like I said, a bang up mm. job on it. Not a horrendous price. Uh, again, the Stovo was one of the original five. Um, the real McCoy. And uh, yeah, I have to say, as a, as a, uh, I had um, I ordered a, a Stovo. Uh, what was it? The, uh, you see, I can't even remember what watches I've had now. It's it's got that bad. I can't. Anyway, I I had a stove at one point. You you guys can mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys will know better than me. But um, right, I ordered from the website and and uh, you could customize like you could have like the rotor signed or you could have all kinds of different things. And I thought, oh, that's you know uh, like real like you know hands hands on customization like hands on manufacturing almost. Yeah, yeah. Great, oh man, you were picking some absolutely some blinders today. Well, thank you. It's you know, it's like you just said, it's difficult to pick a pilot's watch that stands out mm. because they're not supposed to. Right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, the Citizen Skyhawk eighty, and you're gonna like this because you 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 talked about the uh, Blue Angels one. Yeah, I did. You got yeah. it. Yeah. So this is just the standard version, but I was looking at Citizen and. I should say, before I get into this watch, I get a lot of people say, oh, why don't you feature Citizen more? Why don't you feature Citizen more? And the truth is, I owned a ton of Citizens before I had a channel. Right. I know them very, very well. But, but recently, it's because most of the new ones are EcoDrive. I just, you know, I, yeah. I don't really gravitate towards them. Even though I love their designs, and I've said at times on the, on the entry level, I do think their, their quality is superior to Seiko. But the... God. This Skyhawk, um, I didn't know this, but um, Citizen had a lot of early innovations with any Digi watches, and specifically um, pilot watches. Mm -hmm. The first one it was in 1989. Uh, they released simultaneously two watches: the Aerochron and the Wingman. Now, the Aerochron had the <clears throat> world's first built-in altimeter in an any Digi, so that was pretty cool. Um, and then. You know, because no one had done that before. And it, what a fantastic complication for a pilot, right. you know. It's just logical, right? right? In 1994, the first Navihawk arrived. And, um, you, you know, these watches, I mean, I'm not even going to list the complications because right. it, it's, it's, it's quicker crazy. to say what it doesn't have, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so right, right, it right. has everything. It, the only thing it won't do is cook your dinner. But right. it will... I mean, just look at it. It's chock a block with everything, right? Information. Exactly. Um, so, but what's interesting is that um, the, the, the Skyhawk AT was w among one of the first 
watches to, to feature radio controlled timekeeping, which cool. uh, Citizen did first. And I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. I didn't um, know that and then, then they introduced EcoDrive in, I think, I'm not quite sure, in the 90s, which was a, quite a big breakthrough because beforehand, solar, you'd have to put a cell somewhere. So EcoDrive right. was the first technology that could, you could hide it under the dial. Right. So you've got a kind of confluence or culmination. Uh, not what's the best word? Um, just a marriage. Marriage, perfect. Thank you. Of all these great technology and advantage uh, um, advances coming together in one mighty. I mean, it's a big, big boy. For uh, but yeah, how big is that? I'm looking at I it. I think I'm like, it's wow, a, that's big. Yeah, forty five. I think it's forty four. You know, they, you know what it is? They don't tell you these. It's the manufacturer thinks these things aren't important. Yeah. W which drives me absolutely bananas. Oh, 47. 47. Jeez, that is a yeah. big boy. It's a big boy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, I know many friends of mine who own these who are pilots. And um, there's so much to choose from. You don't have to get this version. But, of course, there's the uh, ProMaster Nighthawk, which I think works better. It's 42. But that, that yeah. doesn't have as many complications. I've reviewed that right. a long time ago. Right. Any from the ProMaster family of pilots watches shares all right. this history. So I just right. I thought it was really really cool. So I like it. I like it. I love my Any Digi. This is my Brightling Aerospace base. So uh, nothing says pilots in aerospace more than uh, you yeah. said the Nava timer before, which I totally agree with. Um, but this is my Breitling Aerospace. No, you cannot get them new for under $1,500. Um, you do have to go to the used market, and it may be slightly more beat up than this one is mm. if it's under 1500 But I really wanted to include it. I was on eBay. You can find them for, you know, and watch a recon or whatever for around this price. Uh, so this guy is the titanium version, uh, 30 eight or 38 millimeters i believe uh so 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 light um it's got two displays the bottom one can be time can be chronograph it can be a countdown timer it could be an alarm time um it could be a wait time and then the top one just kind of it's always usually black the top one just shows you the mode that you're in mm. and it's all um, controlled right now, by black. one single crown it's all controlled by the crown the only problem is that when you if you if i move my wrist and i dig the crown in i get the the alarm sounds or I start right. the stopwatch or something. Yeah. So that's like it's only downfall, but it's a bi-directional diving bezel actually um, with the nice points on it. You know, that each point yeah. is screwed in uh, uh, individually. Uh, let's see any kind of notes I had. The biggest thing was, well, I, they come they come now with a black light, uh, backlight. Yeah. Um, the, far, the, the Evos, the 42s or whatever. Yeah, that, that was the, the second generation. Now you see, now you're in my wheelhouse because I really fell down the aerospace rabbit hole okay. and i was gonna buy one last month the oh. second gen because i wanted the backlight i had um okay i had the chrono space which is a kind of hybrid of that and the it's a very rare watch it's very strange right. it's like a okay. it's like a, a navi timer m mm -hmm. mixed with the aerospace so it's got the okay. any digi but then it has the scales got it yep yeah. yeah the rotating scales but i love that watch so i know the the movement really well, the module or whatever they they call Got it. Got it. You know? This was the watch that you know, as a kid, I always wanted. I always remember seeing yeah. this watch um, in the case and stuff, and um, or as a youngster, really, should say as a kid. Uh, so really, I bought this used a bunch of years ago. The guy had actually just had it serviced, um, had the crystal replaced, so the crystal is spotless. You know, they they use AR on both sides. Uh, just a wonderful, wonderful watch. Super light. Yeah. You know, because of the titanium yeah. and I don't know. To me, it just, I get 12.369 on the dial, and it's Breitling, which obviously is a aircraft watch company, yeah. so this just speaks to me as being probably what I would consider my favorite pick, if you can find one, which you should be able to, under 1500 bucks. I think they, they were responsible for making kind of any digi kind of cool, really, really cool and like popular, popular yeah. and, and I don't want to say luxury, but I mean, it, they are a luxury brand. They're a luxury yeah. brand. Um, I yeah. have to show you this because um, this is a schlocky, I mean, this is a high budget schlock film, right? Broken Arrow. Have you, okay. have you ever seen this? I think I have. Right. That's the one where they, they the lost nuclear weapon in the desert yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really like John Woo, great director, but his stuff he made um, back in his Hong Kong days were much better than when he came to America. Uh, but there is... We, we ruin everything. <laughs> <laughs> 
250 million dollars by 0900 Utah time. If you have not... Good God. You're out of your mind. Ain't it cool? Just watch Face Off and you'll see exactly what I mean. But um, he, I'm a big fan of his earlier work. But in this film, John Travolta has the aerospace. Oh, really? Okay. And you hear the beat. He, he uses it to, to figure out when the nuke is going to go off. So, he, you know. Okay. So it's, it's, it's very cool. And I watched that about a month ago and that's what sent me down the rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. That'll do it. Yeah. That'll do it to you. Yeah. It's such a cool watch. It really is. It's it's iconic in a way. It's iconic in its in its own right, I guess. Um, it has a micro following online, but I just think it's just so. Some people don't like them because of, you know, and I get it. It's a bit yeah. bit of a marmite watch. Can be. It's it can be, and you know, any digis or, I mean, still even today, they're not totally popular. Um, they're not everywhere. Not many. Mm. Not all companies make any digis. Uh, but I I really works. regret selling the the Chronos. I bought it for eleven hundred. And mm-hmm. now they're going for like three grand. I can't. Wow. I cannot find because it was a combination of being just a very obscure. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll show. I'll send you an image of it later. You'll sure. really like it. It's okay. Yeah. Thank you. It's the Hamilton Murph. Uh, okay. um, sorry, it's the Hamilton. I'll do that again. <laughs> it's the <laughs> Hamilton Cooper. Got it. Okay. Uh, which is just the car key day date, and it's called the Cooper because it was in the movie Interstellar by Christopher Nolan. Okay. And again, it's a, a different take on the Flieger. You'll recognize the dial layout instantly. Sure. But the dial looks like, right? Yeah, but they've refined it with this. Hamilton does a good job of, of blending kind of little Americanist, Americanism in its style, little curvaceous nice. cases and little re- refinements on the applied numerals. And Love the hands. Yeah, and as the hands pass, you'll see it. it, it skeletonized on the numerals of that inner that is so cool so the oh that that's like a like like, like a hidden gem there the, the how the loom is done on the hands that's nifty yeah you can get several versions as a the, it's, it's a 42 millimeter mm-hmm. but you know pilot watches are supposed to be big so i'm not i'm not going to complain there but uh there is a cheaper quartz one for under 500 this one is around 900 you could probably get it for less the, the, mm-hmm. the eta based automatic Great complications because you've got the Diana date beautifully placed. Um, it's a movie icon. Yeah. I reviewed this way back in the day and then everyone was like, make the Murph watch because in the movie, the Murph watch is, um, didn't exist. It was a, right. because Hamilton, I should explain, everyone knows Hamilton. Um, great, uh, originally American, now Swiss. Right. Uh, ancient, ancient. From here, actually, they started in Pennsylvania in, in Lancaster. Here, mm-hmm. uh, I think in nineteen no, no, sorry, eighteen ninety two. So ancient. Okay. Um, and they've been in over four hundred movies. But what I love about Interstellar is that they actually purpose built a special watch as a. There's a climactic scene. No spoilers, but they use the watch to communicate through time. Okay. Um, and they use the hands uh, for Morse code. Oh, cool. it, it was such a stunning I, I would have chosen that and they did release it recently but they made it way too big um, okay but I, I, I just love the, the quality of it the, its iconic status it's it's just a beautiful kind of doodle watch it's right. gorgeous it, it, yeah it's really nice and I don't really know what more to say about it it's good value as well and Hamilton make extremely excellent watches what is the movement is it a 2834 it was originally but now they, they they've tweaked it is their h40 so they they boosted so they the do something okay power reserve to about 80 hours and got it they slowed I, it down i love that i love full day across the top that's just yeah that's so cool yeah it's so yeah. nice you don't see enough watches like that anymore obviously except for you know day dates right from rolex you don't see enough full days yes no precisely and nowadays you can get all kinds of different dial. There's a there's yeah. a gray one. I wonder if they do a blue for you. Oh, well, thank you. I'm oh, they do. You, I'm glad you're thinking about me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they do. There's a blue. It's blue sunburst. Oh, nice. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at that. Oh uh, no. I, the the hand loom is what gets me. That loom is so cool. How they cut it away. Yeah. 
that's nice. Very nice. Nice choice. Thank you. Um, oh, and I, sh I should also say, nice time. I forget. Hamilton actually made these. Oh, the general purpose. Okay. Yeah, the yeah. Millspec um, field watch. So it kind of all yeah. kinds of kind of ties in. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it, I think. That's it. Yeah, yeah, I think we're done. Right, so I should say a massive thank you to Mark uh, for sponsoring uh, the production of today's video. Uh, please do check out his channel, his thank Instagram. You. I'll yep. leave all the details. Uh, have you got any special videos about pilot watches I, sh I, sh I could kind of recommend? I've definitely done watch and learns on Fliegers. Nice. You know, where I, I pulled out the original drawings that I was able to find, um, you know, from the 40s, the procurement drawings. I talk about the difference between an A dial and a B dial, you know, the, the Beobachter and the observation dials. Perfect. And all that you know stuff. what? Yeah. I'll put it right there. So, guys, so check that out if you want to learn some more. Perfect. Perfect. All right, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it Ooh. and found it useful. And as always, we will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.